Well, good morning and welcome to Oak Ridge Community Church. My name's Tom Noblet. I'm one of the pastors here at the church. Hello, Oval. That's Oak Ridge Online. How about a round of applause for everybody that's watching online? <laughs> now, let's balance this out and let's boom if they're at a lake. <laughs> well, welcome online. Hey, I wanted to tell you guys about a word called honor. That's an important word. It means to value, to respect, to esteem. And... Uh, on the 4th of July, it seems like our flag and our country's taken a little bit of a hit with, with some, some people, and, and quite frankly, uh, I don't like it, I don't understand it, and I don't think it's right. And uh, we have a country that is flawed as it is, and every, every nation, every organization, every church is flawed because it's ran by people, and people are flawed. But with that said, the United States of America is the most free group of people, government that's ever existed. And we have freedoms today that we can assemble. We're not worrying about what's going to happen to us. We're not going to worry about uh, so many other things. So with that said, um, I thought for this 4th of July, I had a little video that I watched that was just a cute little video. And then I'm going to say a prayer when we come out of it. But it's just about uh, honor and respect of uh, our nation and the freedom that has been fought for us. And I just want to remind you, there's been so many lives given in every battle so that we could stand here today. So turn your eyes towards the screens, if you will. Grandpa! I'm the kid that's all the candy. Grandpa. I'm the ugly, dandy. I'm glad I am. So don't go Sam. I'm a real life Yankee Doodle. Made my name and fame and boodle. Just like Mr. Doodle did by riding on a pony. I love the <coughs> Why didn't you tell me you had a dress-up box? Well, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that all my dress-up clothes would fit you so good. I know. I look fabulous. <laughs> yes, you do. Here, put this cape around your neck. You can be Captain America when he's too old to fight bad guys. Hmm. Go ahead, put it on. Well, sweetheart, I don't think this is something that we should um, make a cape out of. How come? It's just a flag. Just the flag. Here, let, let Grandpa sit down. Hallie, uh, do you know what honor means? You mean that thing that God says I got to do to my parents? <laughs> That's the one. You see, honor is when in your heart that you decide to make something or someone very important and very special. So I guess I honor you then. I honor you too, kiddo. <laughs> and every time that I look at this flag, I respect it. And it reminds me that I honor the country that I fought for, the country that you and I live in, and the men and women who sacrifice so much so we can live in freedom. And it also reminds me to thank God for all of it. So maybe instead of wearing the flag, we should put it way up high where everyone can see it. <laughs> That's a bingo, girl. <laughs> like on top of the house? There you go. No, the chimney. <laughs> We'll just get a flagpole.
Yeah, I, yeah, I just want to remind us and just speak into the fact that that flag represents a lot of blood and a lot of sweat. And I don't know if many of you haven't had the chance to go to other parts of the world, but I've had the chance to go to a couple different places on mission trips. And there is the, the happiest moment is when I know I'm coming back home. Because I know of all the things that we can and can't do. I know of all the uh, technology that we have, uh, availability to medicine, educational opportunities, rights bestowed upon men and women, all colors, all race, and uh, our country uh, paid a price for all that. Freedom comes with a price. So I just want to say a quick word of prayer. And for those of you that have served in the military, again, this is just one of the days, or have served uh, defending our freedoms in the, either the police force or uh, through a fire department, I just want to thank all you guys uh, for doing that. Father, we just come to you. We just, yeah. Father, we come to you and we acknowledge that you're the only perfect one, but we thank you that, God, I personally thank you that we won the lucky lottery of being born in this country, where there really is no ceiling on what we can accomplish if we can straighten out some of our character and make better decisions and, and uh, surround people around us who, who are wise. God, I thank you that we can reach our potential, each of our potentials. God, I praise you. I thank you for the people that are defending our country right now. And uh, I pray, dear God, that we um, continue to trust you and look towards you and honor you as, as uh, the founder, basically, of, of our freedoms and our nation. God, we love you. It's in your son's name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. You are? I'm Herc Noblet. And you're a pastor here? I am one of the pastors here. And we got some announcements? We do. What are they? Well, you were going to start off, but I guess you want me to, huh? You got so, it. So, okay. I'll, I'll start hey. off. No, you want me to start off? No, I don't know. Okay, you're running off. the show, big guy. Okay, so, I'll start off yeah. then. Uh-huh. We don't have Jordan here. So we want to get in a fight right here? No, Let's no, duke no, it good. out. No. All right. Look, I want to show you a picture real quick of a photo op. We're since on the 4th of July. You got this picture? Tech team? That's out front. You can get a picture. That's our, our Mosaic Arts team worked on that yesterday. Look at that. Isn't that great? Look at the fireworks going off. The only reason I tell you guys to get photos is, one, they're kind of fun, but two, every time you take a photo, somebody else sees it, and it's an advertisement for, for the church it, that we go to. So I love that when you guys do that, when you share it, and it makes people think, well, maybe I can take a step, and maybe that involves um, me going back to church or trying out church for the first time. So uh, that's one. Second thing is, is we have a men's prayer breakfast. That's next week, Saturday, July 10th at 7 a.m. Yeah, I think that's a little different than normal. They're having like time in here teaching and eating, but then they're going out and playing some games and get, having guys get to know one another and that so kind of stuff. So we got some competitive games, a little competitive some ladder ball yeah. and that. Uh-huh. So if you're a man, if you're, any, guys, any of you guys were here last week, raise your hand. All last right. month? La- no, last, last week. No, oh, last, oh, okay. I mean, last week's, so, last sorry, week's sorry, message. Sorry. Anybody here for last week's message? Men, raise your hands if you're here for last week's message. All right, I, I stomped on you pretty hard. But not with any guilt, with saying, look, you, we need to step up. You need to step up. And uh, God ask, where are you? Next week would be a perfect time if you can make it sat- Saturday, uh, July 10th here at 7 o'clock. Just continue to see what God does uh, through the men at our church. And so we'd love for you to show up there. So no guilt, but please show up and see what God does. Yep. Building that. What else? We've got the edge this Tuesday night. So kind of a, you know, summertime's a little bit different. Tuesday night up here at 630. That's for kids going into seventh grade all the way up through senior year of high school. We're going to meet up here from 630 to 8 and have a time of worship and small groups like they always do. But then we're going to need... Um, Parents that are responsible or kids are responsible. We're going over to Sky Zone after that and check in at Sky Zone is at 8.30 and then we have the whole place rented out for our, for our students from 9 until like 10.30. So if you've got kids going into seventh grade all the way up, that'll be a great one to come to Bring this show Tuesday. Up, be a great time to show up. Mm-hmm. And then the last announcement that we basically have is VBS. Sign up for VBS, Vacation Bible School. Uh, the dates, I think they might be behind me if they're not they're on the there. 26th through the 29th. Sign up. I know we have roughly close to about 150 volunteers. We could still use more. And I know there's still room for kids, so invite your neighbors into that category. to be a great day. If you're a guest today, we are glad that you're here. We'd love to give you an information packet, which I forgot to bring up, that you can get at the Information Center. And you take that at the Information Center right outside these doors, then take it right around the corner of the room called the Connect Room, and they'll give you free T-shirts for you and everybody that's with you today. So just for showing up, and they'll give you a packet that tells you all about the church. No pressure, nothing like that at all. Just want to give you more information. Hey, why don't you say a word of prayer, and I'm going to get ready to speak. Yeah. 
Father in heaven, we just, um, again, we come and we just thank you um, for just the amazing blessings that we have in this nation and, and, and Father, in this church, just the freedoms and, and things that we get to enjoy. Um, Father, I pray that, that all of us over the next uh, 45, 50 minutes or so, Father, that, that we just pay attention through music, through Tom's word, through prayer, um, Father, that, that we just, um, we hear your voice and, and also think about our response and, and what it means. But Father, we gather today because of what Jesus Christ has done on our behalf, and we give you all the glory and praise through him. In his name we pray, amen. Thanks, sir. Going to be a total different service today. We gave the band off uh, the entire weekend, so you're not going to have any live band. If you're a guest today, we have, I think, one of the best bands, if not the best band, of any church band in the country. So. But they've been going hard completely through the pandemic and that, so they had this weekend off. So here's what I thought about. I said, okay, as we're programming this service. There are two things. One, I went down and saw a concert with my uh, wife and uh, uh, my daughter and my grandkids and my uh, uh, son-in-law down at my son's church in Atlanta. And it was by a group called Maverick City. And this Maverick City, they, they will, their opening song was 23 minutes long. I mean, can you imagine that? 23 minutes, right? I mean, most songs are five minutes, this is, but they are phenomenal. They, you can just feel whatever God's doing through the, their music. It was great. So I saw they're coming to St. Louis, and I thought, okay, that's great. They're coming to Faith Church in Sunset Hills. I'll go there. But then the next thing I saw were tickets ranged from $45 to 200 bucks. Then I thought, I really like them, but I don't know if I like them that much, all right? <laughs> and uh, uh, so anyway, uh, we got a couple tickets, and... and uh, I thought, you know what, I think I can bring Maverick City to you guys uh, here. I don't know if it's legal what I'm doing today, but, but we're doing it, all right? So I guess I might pay later. But uh, so there's three songs that this Maverick City that I've been worshiping to for a month that's brought me to joy, that's brought me to tears, that's brought me to uh, places with God in a car that I would only call, tell you there is as holy as the holy of holies. And I thought, you know what, uh, maybe that you're here today to hear three little messages, and that's all they are, three little messages. I want to lighten up. Last week's message was pretty heavy. And and then maybe this music will speak to something inside of you. And then Herc's going to come up after each message, and he's going to say a little thing in a prayer. So we're just going to go boom, boom, boom. I don't think it's going to take that long. I know I've said that before. But uh, uh, so I want you to imagine uh, that you were there with me, and we're worshiping together, and I'm saying, can you just believe this word? Can you believe what they're saying? And I want you to imagine something else. I want to bring you back to the first time the church gathered. I mean, crazy time period. 2,000 years ago, there's, been, there's no church. There's no church anywhere except here. This is the first time. And then when they gathered together, I think the apostles looked at each other and said, okay, well, what do we do? And I think under the inspiration of God's Spirit, they came to the conclusion, this is what it should be about when we gather. So in your mind's eye, this is really what we've tried to do for 18 years, what most churches try and do. But I want to tell you exactly what they did, and then um, we'll sing a song, okay? But this is what we're going to try and do this morning. We're going to try and do exactly what the first church did when they first met. In Acts 2, 42, we read this, talking about this first gathering, our first gathering together. We've heard about Jesus Uh, We knew what had happened to him. Um, And we want to read this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. So they got together and they were devoted. They were loyal to. What were the things they were loyal to? The apostles' teaching. So they taught what God had taught them, what Jesus had taught them, to community, gathering together, and to prayer. Those are the things. So they said, when we get together, look, we're going to teach. We're going to have community. We're going to shake people's hands. We're going to see and c- congratulate you on having a baby and, and mourn with you if, as you uh, walked away from somebody whose body was put in the ground. We're going to do life together. We're going to celebrate. That's what we're going to do. And then we're going to pray. And then just a few verses later, in verse 47, it says, and we're going to praise God together. So basically, they learned, they had community, they prayed, and they sang. And for 2,000 years, that's what's gone on. And it's impacted people so much that in the United States alone, there's over 350,000 evangelical churches, meaning churches that preach the Bible, 
like ours. And throughout the course of the world, there's pr probably millions. So uh, just to echo into that just a little bit, um, Paul wrote to an early church a little bit later on, this Apostle Paul, who's, uh, he wrote to this church in Thessalonica. And Thessalonica is an ancient city in modern-day northern Greece. And he was commending them, the people of Thessalonica, for holding fast in spite of persecution. Their church was under persecution by the government uh, at that area, the Roman government, and by some of the Jewish leaders. And here's what he said. And what he said is just really hard, but I think it's healing. Here's what he said. He said, rejoice always. Right, now look at me before we read. Don't jump ahead. Rejoice always. Now, isn't it time, hard at times to rejoice always? You mean my dog who I've had for 15 years I just buried? This is the best friend I've ever had. Rejoice always? I mean, we've been trying to have a baby for four years. Rejoice always? And then he says, yeah, and here's how. You pray continually. And you give thanks to God in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's hard, but it's healing. When I'm at a funeral and somebody has died before they should have died. And you know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the person that lives to a good old age. I'm talking about the person that's died before they should have died. The only thing I can say at all that makes, brings any healing is, aren't you glad you had them for this amount of time? Would you have rather them never been here? And wouldn't you also believe that there's some people that wish they could spend one day with the dad that they really loved as opposed to you had 20 years with a dad that you totally loved. They, they just wish they could spend one day with a dad that they loved. So again, if you can take a tough situation and, and, and look at God and say, it's hard. I know, this, is nothing. this is the toughest thing in Christianity in my world. But to thank God and to pray. In the midst of praying, say, God, I want to rejoice. I want to thank you for at least this opportunity. And through time, when you, when you thank God for your husband who passed, or your wife who passed, or your son or your daughter who's passed, or an animal, or an ant, or somebody. When you thank God, there's healing that comes through that, as opposed to bitterness and, and pain and sorrow. So there's a, a song um, that was called Talking to Jesus that I played for Mother's Day. That uh, one of my keys to life is I learned early on that I didn't need to have long-winded prayers to God. I need to say, God, help me. God, pray for that person. God, lead me, give me wisdom. It can be short, just conversations throughout the day. And some of you that pray long, great, I love that. I just not, that's just not me. But it's a continual conversation. So for today, here's what I wanted to say. God is with us. His spirit is with us just as much as 2,000 years ago. And maybe during this eight-minute song, God wants you to pray. And maybe this prayer is a prayer of thanksgiving in spite of a hardship. So turn your eyes towards the screen. And God, please do what you're going to do. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes here just to pray. But, you know, as I was going through that song, just it, it amazes me like prayer warriors. I mean, people that just never give up. And, you know, Jesus, he, he told parables where he said, wear God out. Just continue to go with him, to go after him with, with what's on your heart and the things that, that you need. So um, I, I just pray that in this next few moments that you pray for devoted hearts. We have hearts that persevere and continue on. And then, and then you know, I, I'm also reminded of Scripture where it says, you know, the prayer of righteous people, the prayer of, of Christ followers are powerful and effective. So pray for those people who have prayed for you, if that makes any sense. Because I know I've been uplifted by the prayers of people. So pray for people that you know have spent their life praying for you. And then also just who's ever on your heart. Just a half hour ago, I received a text from my daughter and a close friend of the family um, she said, could you pray for, for this, this young man who's a very close friend of our family because his best friend committed suicide last night? Said they were like brothers. They spent every day together. I can't even imagine. So just who's ever on your heart. This world just brings things up, and we need God. We need Christ. So just go to him in prayer.
Father in heaven, we can come to you confidently and boldly because of what Christ has done on our behalf. So we thank you that you heard the prayers of your people this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Where two or more gather in my name, I'm in their midst. Jesus says, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And I'm with you always till the end of the age. Our God, our Savior, our Spirit, they're here. And I, I pray that uh, we continue to uh, pray and understand that there's power in that and there's, it's the right way to do it. I was at a Grizzlies game the other day, Gateway Grizzlies, a uh, little minor league team over in Illinois, and um, they had a shortage of workers, so the lines were long to get a hot dog or to get a hamburger or anything else. And doesn't, don't you guys hate waiting in line? Anybody, am I the only one? Raise your hand up. You guys hate, I mean, you just hate it. And it's, and it's weird with instant delivery and instant everything. I mean, waiting for me is like three minutes. Like, if I got to wait like three minutes, like, seriously, three minutes? It seems crazy. Right? So my, my ability to wait and show patience has gone down. Does anybody else feel that way? You know, like popcorn, it takes two and a half minutes to pop. I'm thinking, two and a half minutes? That seems like an eternity, right? So that's a problem because here's why. So much of Scripture talks about waiting on God. There's, there's four motions I'm going to talk about just real quick. Four motions that, uh, that you can feel deep enough that they'll cause you to move your moral boundaries. Uh, when I speak to teenagers, when I watch teenagers make decisions, I know it's one of these four emotions that's causing them to compromise the value system. Let me just raise it. When I speak to some of you, and I know you do, um, you know what to do, and yet like Paul says, he says, I know what to do, but why do I do what I know, not, what, what I, know I ought not to do? It's these four emotions that can, they're powerful enough, they can cause you to, like I said, move your moral boundaries. So I wanted to speak just real quickly in the same kind of way, just like a, a seven or eight minute little uh, deal about these four things, because I prayed all week. I said, okay, God, I know you want us to teach, and I know you want us to gather together, and want us to have community, and, and uh, uh, want us to pray to you, and then and praise you through song. And, but what do you want me to say? Because it's kind of a little bit random. And, and I'd heard a message a while back on this, and this just came to my mind. I try not to make any decisions when I'm feeling these four feelings strongly. And I would encourage you, if you, if you walk from today, maybe you're just here today and it's for the first message. Maybe God needs you to pray and rejoice always. Maybe it's for this one, that there's wisdom in this, there's nuggets of gold in this, that you said, I'd never thought of it that way. Wow, that's right. If I can own this and live this, this can make my decision making much better in life. But, but here's the four. Uh, I never want to take a, make a decision when there's fear in my life when I'm afraid, afraid, and primarily afraid of the future. You know, you can make some tough decisions when you're afraid of well, the future, so I have to do something now. The second thing is when, that, when I'm experiencing loneliness, and I, I rarely experience that in my life. In fact, I told somebody the other day, I really don't know what it's like to be lonely because I've always been with Kathy since I was 14. And so I don't know what loneliness is really like. I've always had family around it. And I said, but when I can feel what I sense that I believe is lonely, um, I don't want to make a decision then. I know that there's students, there's young adults that they've either moved in with somebody or picked the wrong guy because they're tired of feeling lonely. And older people, I see the same thing. You, you settle. And when I mean settle, not for a bad person. You just settle for the person that you know is probably not what you're really looking for because you're lonely. And I get that. Or you make a bad decision for a night. Third thing is anger. You know, when I'm angry is when I've hurt the people that I love most and the most innocent people. When I'm angry, I hurt innocent people. That's kind of what we do. And then the third thing is when I feel rejection. When somebody's rejected me, and it could be rejection by saying, you know, saying a name or calling you something, but when you feel rejected, um, someone close to you has hurt you, you feel like you want to lash out. Any of these four ever get you? Fear, loneliness, anger, rejection. You feel those four. They have the power to totally lower your moral compass if you make decisions during these time periods. And, and the problem with these decisions is, is some of them just don't go away in a day. You know, they don't go away just right away. And that's why I think God says he needs prayer, you need community, you need his teaching, because some of these have latched on, they were put into your heart as a kid or a circumstance that happened. I'm gonna read to you 
uh, a little story and um, read two scripture verses that would show you some decision making that was made by somebody. And they made a decision and they were in the midst of either fear, fear, loneliness, anger, or rejection. And this one, I think it was fear they made this decision. But here's kind of what went on. Uh, Jesus is with the apostles. And scripture says, those are the people that were with Jesus at the time. So scripture says that they were uh, speaking to a group of 5,000 men. And it said, not numbering uh, the women or the children. So let's just assume that there's 5,000 men there. Let's would assume that there's another 5,000 women, probably more, it'd be my guess. And then they brought their kids along because you didn't have daycare, you didn't have babysitters. So you pulled them along, especially if you knew you were going to hear who you thought was the Messiah or one that did miracles. So I would guess there are 15,000 people here at this talk. So Jesus goes on and he talks and it gets to the point where they've been there a long time. And the apostle said, look, these people need to be fed. And Jesus says, okay, well, you feed them. He goes, well, look, we only got like five loaves of bread and a couple of fish. We couldn't do that. And Jesus says, just start. Just work with what you have. Start with where you're at and trust me. Not trust in you, trust me. Start with where you're at and trust me and see what happens. So uh, we read in, uh, so they did that, by the way. And uh, when they were done, intentionally I read, where each of the apostles picked up a basket of leftovers. They fed everybody. Now, how long that took? I don't know. How long does it take to feed 15,000 people? I'm guessing a few hours. And uh, they picked up over 12 baskets of leftovers. And that was the lesson Jesus taught, that, look, you just take what you have, and you trust me, and we'll get this done together. We'll do this together. But here's immediately what happened, Matthew 14, 22 through 33, right after that. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat, the staff they picked up all the bread, and, and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went on a mountainside by himself to pray. Wow, Jesus went and did what? Prayed. He was tired. He had done a lot. He goes and prays. When you're tired, when you're worn out, when you've given your all, go what? Go pray. It's a great thing. That's what we've done this morning. That's why this is just exactly what, imagine this is 2,000 years ago. God is with us. Went by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. So Jesus spent a while there. Later, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. So imagine the waves were kind of pushing this boat way out there. Shortly before dawn, if it's before dawn, is it light or dark out? Say it with some gusto. I'm going to ask tougher questions later. So, so, right. Was it light or dark? Dark. It was dark. It was night. You ever been on a boat in the middle of the night? You ever been out in the ocean? You ever walked along the edge of the ocean in the middle of the night and thinking all the creepy crawlies that are coming in on you? All this kind of stuff. So they were in a boat shortly before dawn. Jesus went out to them walking on the lake where there's a storm and a squall. Went out to them walking on the lake. Now that's kind of weird, isn't it? When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. You could imagine they're out on a boat and all of a sudden either they hear flop, flop, flop. I don't, maybe he wasn't silent. I don't know how Jesus walked. All right, but they hear something, they're like, what in the world? And they see this thing coming towards them. What would you think? Would you be terrified? If we were out on a little raft, let's say a $3 raft that we got at Walmart, and we're out floating together at night in the middle of the ocean, 300 yards offshore, and we see something come walking, would you be thinking, hey, it's Jesus? You wouldn't be thinking that. Right? You might be calling to Jesus, Jesus, help me, I'm coming soon, right? But you're not calling him to him that way. They were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. Yeah, I bet. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. I know your situation. It's me. It's I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Can you imagine that? It's dark. It's pitch black. There ain't no way in the world. Jesus, you walk on the water. I'm staying in the boat. There ain't no way in the world any of us I bet, would have said, oh, I'll come walk to you. First of all, you've never done that. You'd sink, sink into what? The abyss. The Jews even had terms for lakes like this. That they, it was a, I don't have time to go into it, but the Jews didn't like this kind of water. Lord, it's you. Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water. He walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he looked around him and took his eyes and was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. 
you have little faith, why did you doubt? And when they climbed in the boat and the wind died down, then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you're the son of God. Now, the story there is just to show you, um, wow, didn't you like Peter's courage? I mean, I think he's kind of stupid jumping out on a boat in the water, but I liked his courage, all right? I liked it. I got to say that. And he took a few steps on the water. And then he just saw his conditions around him, which is what we do a lot. We have faith in Jesus. And all of a sudden, we look at our surroundings. And we go, okay, are you big enough for this? Are you, are you good enough for this? There's a lesson in this we could talk about. That's not really where I'm going. But then something happens. Not too long in the future. Luke 22, 54 through 62. They took Jesus when Jesus went to be with the apostles, he went to have community with them in a garden. He went there to pray, just like what we're doing today. And Jesus is with us. His spirit is with us. God is with us. And he prayed. This is the time where Judas had set Jesus up to be entrapped. Luke 22, 54 through 63, 62. Then seizing him, this is Jesus, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him, and she said, this, this man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I, do, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, you are also one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, certainly this fellow is with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed because the Lord turned and looked straight at him. Look at Peter. Then Peter remembered the words the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you would disown me three times. And he went outside and he wept bitterly. What changed? What, what took hold of Peter? Fear. It could have been loneliness, it could have been anger, it could have been rejection, but this one was fear. During the pandemic, what I've seen experienced more than anything in people's lives is fear. Fear. And I think it's still got a grip on people, and I think we're going to be paying a price for it for quite a while, and maybe you're paying the price for that. And all I can tell you is, is, is to look to God. Let's wait on God. Let's see how he uses this pandemic. I don't believe he caused it, but I believe he can use it. I don't believe he caused his arrest, but I know he used it. He allowed it. So I want you just to sit back and wait. Wait on him. What is there right now that's going on in your life? That because you have a fear of something, of the future, something's going to happen. Maybe it's financial. You're afraid of this and there's a panic going on. What is some loneliness, some decision you're making right now that's because you say, you know what, the clock's ticking, here's what's going on. Or there's anger in your life about something. What is there something that you're not doing? Or there's some form of rejection that you've experienced that you're just not waiting on God. So I watched those four things and try and make no decisions during that time period. And one of the harder things to do is, again, to rejoice in the Lord, but then to wait on the Lord. To say, God, I'll wait. I'll wait. I remember when I, we were supposed to start this church 18 years ago, and I remember the prompting I had. It seemed so long on waiting on what God wanted me to do. I was clear on what he wanted me to do, but it just seemed like there was months and months and months of waiting. Is this really going to happen? And maybe yours is longer, but here's what I'm going to encourage you to do is to wait. So there's a song that Maverick City sang. That's called About Waiting on the Lord. And it's brought me, when I've been fearful, it's brought me strength. When I felt loneliness in the few moments I have, it's brought me comfort. When I felt anger, it's lowered it. And when I felt rejection, it's brought me the love of God. So this song is 13 and a half minutes long on the album. We don't have time to play it, so we cut it down to roughly five and something. But here's where I want to get personal. Some of you know those four things are causing you to move your moral boundaries. And I think God has you here today to say, look, I want you to wait on me. I'm fully aware of what you're going through. And I know it's not easy, but I want you to wait. Maybe this song is an encouragement for you. Turn your eyes towards the screens. So when we talk about prayer here, sometimes we say that God answers prayer in three ways. Sometimes he says it's a go. 
and he'll do just things that amaze us and, and answers our prayers quickly and, and, and goes right after it. Then sometimes it's no. And as the perfect father, he says, nope, I've got something better for you. And if I gave you that, it wouldn't be good for you. And then other times he says slow. And that's when we have to wait on the Lord, when, when he's working and doing some things. So I, I just want to read three scriptures just to encourage you a little bit. Psalm 27, 14 says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Psalm 33, 20 says, we wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. And then Isaiah chapter 40 says, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So maybe you're in a season of waiting right now. We're going to give you a few moments just to go to God in prayer and, and, and continue to, to wrestle with God, continue to pray for that, but ask him to give you patience and give, him, give, you, give yourself patience so that, that you're actually being changed and God is doing a work even while you're waiting on the thing that maybe you're praying about. And then also, if you could give a special prayer for Tom, because if he can't wait two and a half minutes for popcorn, he's got some serious issues, all right? So go to God in prayer for a while. Father in heaven, we thank you that you hear our prayers. Again, God, we just um, we know that you're a loving father, and, and we know that, um, that you never turn your back on us, that, that your arms are open, you always are calling us to you. And so, Father, I pray for the person right now who's just not getting a clear direction, clear answer. I pray, Father, that, that they will put their faith and their trust in you because you are, you are trustworthy, and those scriptures show that, Father, even in the midst of waiting, you will sustain, you will encourage, you will strengthen, you will teach. Because again, we know that you are a perfect and loving and good father. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. He will renew your strength. I have sang that so many times in a car. Wait, only got... Isn't that a good song? Does, did it make any of you feel that you wanted to watch eight more minutes of singing that? I don't, if you're not worshipers, I don't know. I, I just loved it. Well, um, I want you guys to repeat after me. One, two, three, four. I can't even count them all. Now try it this way. One, two, three, four. I can't even count them all. Now look the person to your left and say, I'm glad you're not up on stage singing. Anyway. <laughs> this is the last little thing that I'd prayed about, I'd heard a long time ago that um, the Israelites wouldn't say the name God in any way because it was so honored. They honored the name so much and respected it and feared it so much that they didn't want to risk saying the name God and saying it wrong or just out of total respect. So in scriptures, they, they'd use the word Y-H-W-H, Y-H-W-H, and they wouldn't say that. We translate it to Yahweh, which was translated to Jehovah, all right? So the ancient manuscripts would have had Y-H-W-H. -H. How do you pronounce Y-H-W-H? -H? I'm going to give you my best. It's, it's, it's kind of like Y-H-W-H. The first breath you take, the first thing you say is the name of God. The last breath you take. Is the name of God. Every breath you get is a gift from God. You are a walking miracle. We see miracles every day, but if we don't look for them, there's miracles every bit as great as Peter walking on water or Jesus walking on water. What God does to change our hearts, to heal us, to give us a hope, to set us on a new path, to give us a, a peace that surpasses all understanding, 
to give us an understanding of love. He provides miracle after miracle. So I'm going to uh, tell you a quick story, then tell you a little about how to get through grief, according to what God says, and then we're going to sing a song. One, two, three, four, I can't even count them all. Talks about miracles. We have a white couch. My wife uh, has fallen in love with the color white, and I've actually grown to like it too, but our entire house is, like I said, Kathy, you want to get new kitchen cabinets? I wonder what color. Guess what color? White. Want to get a couch? What color? We're getting a new fence that's a, that has been a stained fence. You know what color the new fence is going to be? White. Yeah. So I, I like it. I mean, I'm not knocking it, but everything's been white. But the white couch was kind of a big deal because we know that our grandkids sit on this couch all the time. In fact, we call it their couch. It's the uh, Trip Henry Lola couch. And when they sit on the couch, they'll eat popsicles, chocolate ice cream, strawberries on this white couch. And we'll try and put down a a, a towel or a blanket, but, but, you know, the little kids, there's always spots on it. So what I've learned is it's not that big of a deal because to get out those spots, if I take a little Dawn detergent, a little rag, put a little water on it and blot it, all those come out. I mean, so it's, it's crazy. So if you've got spots, I just take it, Dawn, blot them, and they'll come right out. That's how you fix a spot in the couch. Easy, no big deal. How do you, how do you fix grief? How do you get through grief? For a spot, I need dawn, water, and a rag, and some patience. How do I get through grief? God says you get through grief, which is right, with him and gratitude. Define gratitude. I know many of you in this room are probably going through some grief right now. You're going to have to mine the depths of your life, mine the depths of that situation to find gratitude through God to have your heart healed and have the cloud of grief opened. But that is the formula. You can try and get a spot out if you want all day by I don't know, taking a dry shirt and getting it off. It won't happen. To get through grief, it's got to be a gratitude. And I'm speaking to Christ followers now because you know Jesus more where you can find things to be grateful for. You can look at your life deeply and realize where the grace of God has come into the picture. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. We read that earlier. I'm reviewing it real quickly. That was the very first vignette. Rejoice always. This is Paul speaking. Pray continually to the church of Thessalonica. Give thanks in all circumstances. Why? For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Why? Because he loves you and he wants you to have the best life that you can have on this earth. He wants you to get through it. And the only way to get through it is to find gratitude in the midst of problems. Does does griping and moaning change grief and depression? No, I say it adds to it. It changes you. There is power in gratitude. And you have to fight for it. I know this is not easy, but I believe God wants us to hear this. Online, he wants you to hear it. This is where he's at today. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, Paul writes a letter to church in Philippi. And he says basically the same thing. He says, do not... Be anxious about anything. How do I get rid of this worry? He says, do not be anxious about anything. About anything? I don't have food on the table. My job's in the problem. I have government authorities on my neck. I have tough relationships. Uh, I have nobody to take care of me. He says, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, speaking to God, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And you'll answer my prayer? No, I'm not saying that. He's going to answer like Herc said, go, no, or slow. You're going to give me what I want? I'm not saying that. Maybe what you want is not what God's will. It's maybe not what you deserve or what you need. I'll even say that probably more accurately. What will you get though? He says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds, anxiety, grief, depression, in Christ Jesus. Now there's more you can do. But I don't think you can get through grief. I don't think you can get through worry without God and gratitude. So right away, you've got to mine the depths of that. You've got to look for miracles. So you know this song, it's a main lyric that sticks with me is one, two, three, four. So I've been on a journey when this started of counting miracles in my life. Now you can see the obvious one, grandkids, right? Even the ability to walk, the ability to recover. Have any of you guys ever been sick recently? Raise your hand. Any of you guys ever know somebody that's sick? They can actually, the ability to recover. 
or the ability to remember. I've been going through this one. I was out in my street yesterday saying, okay, God, I want to be grateful during this time period. A tree had grown up, and we got these uh, wasps that stung the tree. God, how'd you make it like this? Uh, was this the, how can a wasp sting a tree? And they made these little uh, things on the branches that are like round little knots. Kathy, what are they called? What? Galls. So they're called little galls everywhere, right? So they like ruin these trees, but I saw the tree growing, and I remember I said, I said this tree, so I was thankful because the squirrels are eating these galls, which I read fixes the tree. So normally I don't like the squirrels because they drop acorns everywhere, and they're eating, I'm so, I'm so thankful for the squirrels. Then I went from there, and I thought, in the, I thought in the street, I used to hit balls to my son Matt, tennis balls, to catch him. Now the branches are over the tree, so I know the ball couldn't go there anymore, and I was thankful for the memory I had of hitting tennis balls to my son, who's now in Atlanta. I know I won't see as much, but God brought me a piece and said, but I gave you this time with your son. Aren't you thankful for that? Wasn't that a miracle? And the shade that's going to be brought later on. I enjoyed the shade. Yes, it was a beautiful day in the shade. I had to fight for gratitude. I had to mine it in gold and realize that was better. Yesterday was a great day, a miraculous day. Maybe today God's got you here. To say, look, there's some emotions that can just hamper you. But I've never, ever been away from you. I posted something on social media that says, you know, as many bad steps as it can take for you to walk away from God, you know how many steps it takes for you to turn back to God? One. That's our God. And for some of you that are here today, I want you to understand clearly as I'm trying to lock eyes. He loves you. He's aware of you. No matter whether you've rejected him or not pursued him or have pursued him, and he wants to do life with you. And he wants you to pray. He wants to talk with you. He wants you to look to him. He understands your emotions. He understands hurt in this world. He wants you to wait at times for him. He loves you. God, I praise you and I thank you. And I thank you for this song. The reminder that our life, just the very breath we take that comes in through our lungs, that you use to pump blood is a miracle. Every breath we take. <sighs> Possibly we call your name, God. We thank you for that. Touch our hearts through this. Touch the one that needs to know a miracle. This is them. A miracle it happens all around us. We thank you for this. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen. Turn to the screen if you will. You know, this world is hard sometimes, isn't it? I mean, things just get thrown at us. It's tough. But, you know, God is good. And he works in the midst of this mess. And I don't understand how he does it, but it's amazing. And the more I know him, uh, the more he always comes through. So I, I just, this next little part, just a couple minutes, just pray that you have eyes that see. You've got ears that hear. That you have a heart that is open to the touch of God because he works through every situation. So just go to him in prayer. Father, we thank you for your presence in our lives. Not in a distant way, but in an intimate way. We thank you that we can know you through your son, Jesus. We thank you for the grace and the mercy that he's brought us. We thank you for the power of being grateful to you. We thank you for the hope that goes beyond this world and into our next life. We thank you for reunions that await us. We thank you for miracles of change in our own life now. We thank you for strongholds that will be shattered because of the prayers that have been prayed today. We thank you for that love can grow for you and for others. We thank you that the church that you started 2,000 years ago can gather together in your midst 
and pray to you and praise you and learn from your word and you can touch our hearts and strengthen us and we can walk out of here much better, much different than we walked in. We pray this for our children and our children's children. We pray that the church that we leave to them is even more powerful than the church that was brought to us, that the hope of your son Jesus is spoke clearly. God, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for the gifts that you've given us. We thank you for the songs you've allowed us to sing and the people that could perform them. We thank you for the word that you've kept pure and true. It's in your sons that we pray. And all God's people said, amen. All right, you got to do two things that we're going to do. Number one, guess, do you think we're going to be singing some Maverick City music songs in the future? Yes or no, what do you think? Yeah, so on, yeah, on these you won't be able to sit down. Now you're going to be able to stand like me and, and uh, when I'm in a car, I almost got to raise my hand through the ceiling. One, two, three, four, I can't even, you get the point. I, I botched it, but you get it. That's one. The second thing is you got to soothe my conscience. Now you got to go out and spend 45 bucks for a ticket at Sunset Hills to go watch these guys in concert. I promise it'll be worth it for you. And uh, was today okay? You felt like the church? Just provide a round of applause. Is it good? If you are a guest today, we've really never done a service like this without a band. Our band is so good, they'll come back in and they'll do, uh, they might sing the songs better than Maverick City does it. I'm not sure. They're so good with that. But I just wanted to thank you guys all today. I want you to remember to honor God uh, with your tents. Thank you and with your time and talents. And I want you to remember our country. Pretty good place to live. Amen? Amen. See you guys next week. Thanks for coming.